everybody and welcome back to Wolden. We're going to continue where we left off in the tutorial, which is the next generation quest that is about breeding. So let's go ahead and jump back into it. Let's go with this one then because that's always fun to do. The whole point of these games is to breed your, breed your pets, breed your creatures. Once again, go to meet Tala at your den. She waits for you. I'm not doing all the hissing with the S's. <laughs> Hello again, Isla. Today I bring you one of our most important lessons. Today you're going to learn all about the importance of your dynasty and passing on your genes. Yes, teach me about genetics. While you can trade wolves, befriend wolves, and customize wolves, you can also breed wolves to add more valued members to your pack. But before we get started on those details, we need to have a plan in place for those puppies before they're born. So we have to think ahead. Unfortunately, when puppies are born, their survival is not guaranteed. Without proper care and attention, puppies have a terrible habit of getting into trouble. And sometimes trouble can be lethal. That's so sweet. <laughs> Poor face. Losing puppies can be terribly sad and it is important that you have to try that you have helped try and prevent this. This is where the pup sitter rule comes in. Pup sitter wolves do exactly as described. They watch over puppies within your pack. You see all puppies are born with the survival bar. The size of the litter, level of the parents, or even season the litter is born in can affect how much survival chance puppies are born with. So, so far this does seem pretty complex, which is what I expected, but a lot of it, if you, I think, are just even just very slightly familiar with like the life like how wolves live I think you know it makes sense from like that standpoint if you have a little bit of knowledge of wolves or even just animals wild animals in general pack animals this bar can be increased daily by caring for your puppies and the mother of the puppies if they are not weaned yet the bar likewise can also be decreased by neglecting them but a pup sitter is able to offer further protection to add to a puppy survival bar and are very valuable for keeping puppies safe why don't we go ahead and set a wolf in the pup sitter role right now. Choose any adult wolf that you own that is able to have the new pup sitter role assign and change it in their settings. If you don't have a wolf available, it would be very beneficial to go and get one. Hopefully we can use this one that I claimed befriended. I'm probably going to use Leiden and Wolfden uh, terms interchangeably. I do that for all the games that I play. I just, you know... Yeah, I get confused, I guess, about which, which game I'm actually playing at the time. <laughs> so, oh, Pup Sitter. Here we go. Update. Okay, that's good. You'll notice that this wolf has a new Pup Sitting tab. Now, all Pup Sitters start out with 60% protection that they are able to give to puppies. And this amount gets divided up between the puppies and... This amount gets divided up between the puppies the Pup Sitter protects. Okay. This amount actually increases as you level up the wolf's proficiency. Pup sitters can protect up to 10 puppies at once, but how much you need to boost a puppy's bar will determine how many puppies you want the pup sitter to protect. How many pups can a pup sitter pup sit in a puppy den? Anyway, in the pup sitting tab, you'll also see a blue button that states assign puppies. And you guessed it. From there, you can select the puppies you want your pup sitter to protect. Oh my god, seriously. How many pup sitters can a pup sitter protect in a pup den. I don't, I don't know. Now, speaking of puppies, let's go back to your den. I want to see puppy art. All right. When it comes to breeding, there are a few things. First things first, you can have one breeding male. That's right. One. This role is a fixed role and will last until the male wolf dies of old age, unless you utilize some GC. I think that's the gold cones and gold cones are the premium currency. Unless you utilize some gold cones to retire him from the role early. In addition, a 30-day cooldown goes into the role as soon as you fix a wolf into it. This means even if the wolf dies, you'll need to wait before you can set another one. I'm sorry, what, wait? So if my, I'm just going to call him my breeding wolf dies, I have to wait 30 days before I can choose another one? I'll probably find this out later. I just, I like to ask questions to myself as I, as I go along playing. So I'll find it later. I'll look up the answer. Try to pick nice young blood for your breeding male and this will never be a problem for you. I imagine you're going to want to be quite selective over your breeding male. So I'll cut you a deal. We're going to need to set a breeding male right now. The one you set now will be temporary. And once this quest completes, I'll remove him with no penalties to you just so you get the hang of it. Thank you. So go ahead, click the breeding image on your den page. Let's set one now. Click the breeding image on your den page. Okay. 
I, I'm loving the artwork. I just, I can't really admire the artwork enough. I think it's gorgeous. Here we are. You'll see a drop down with the list of eligible male wolves in your pack. Previous breeding males cannot be made breeding males again, but male lead wolves can also take the breeding position. Choose one now and set it. If you don't have an adult male wolf in your pack right now, you should be sure to go out and get one. Remember, after this quest is complete, I'll remove him for you for free. This is just temporary. Can I use the one that I said as my pup sitter? I guess so. I mean, it has him in the drop down. I'd rather choose Umbra. Okay, well, this isn't actually permanent right now, but let me read this. So this male wolf will remain as your breeding male until he dies. He will not be able to be chased and will not leave your pack. You can remove him as your male early if you wish for a gold cone cost. Please be certain with the male. Removing them early will make it so that male cannot be made a breeding male again. Additionally, when you set a breeding male, you will not be able to set another one even if you remove him or he dies for 30 rollovers unless you pay a cost. Uh, yes, because this is temporary. Yeah, that's better. Now you have a temporary breeding male. You'll see that there are some options here to set your wolf as a stud. This means that other players will be able to submit a request to your wolf for breeding if you choose to list him as available. Okay, so we can stud him out. You have 15 stud slots a week to accept breeding requests from other players, and you can also send out requests to other players too. That's something you can figure out later though. Let's get back to your den and choose a wolf from your pack. Any wolf, including you. Well, that's my that's my only female wolf, so um, we're just going to choose Isla then. I'm also not really sure that I like Isla's look, but I really like the honeydew base, even if I didn't like the actual, the, the marking colors that I chose with it. So I'm going to explain to you a little about genetics. You see all wolves here have their own genetics built in and breeding different bases and markings together can generate different combinations. If you look under the wolf details tab and then under looks, you'll see an area that shows the wolf's base. Beside the base is a percentage, which simply tells you the percentage of wolves in the game that share the same base. This percentage has no effect on breeding. Okay, where is this? Because this is not uh, similar to Leiden at all. Where is this? Okay, there are 1%. Also, something important to know, I think it's only for the first several days of the launch of the game that Honeydew will be available as a starter base. There are several other bases that are also I'm going to just say limited. I'm guessing these are not generally going to be available as starter bases. It's just temporary for the first several days of launch. Okay, so next, next part of the quest. Next, just underneath the base, you'll see the base genetics area. All bases fall under a color category, which is the first word in this note. Cool and cool for, for Isla here. The second word, which is light, will be the intensity, which can be light, medium, or dark. Finally, a Roman numeric numeral will denote the base tier. Tier one is the most common. So we've got cool, light, one. And then wolves cannot produce puppies with a higher base than their base tier unless, okay, yeah, unless paired to another wolf with a higher one. You'll never get a tier three base from a tier one and a tier, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Next are the eyes, skin, nose, and claws. Eyes have their own set of genetics, which you will need to discover on your own. Certain combinations might produce certain eyes, and skin, nose, and claws are usually pretty straightforward, normally taking after one parent or the other. <laughs> Look at this face. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so cute. However, now we are seeing mutation, aren't we? Uh, right here. Let me scroll down. There are two different types of mutations, recessive ones and random ones. Random one, random means just that. They happen spontaneously in litters. Recessive means that it is genetic. Oh, thank you. We have uh, ah, we have genetic mutations in here because in Leiden, they're, I mean, primals, piebalds are genetic. Uh, dwarfism is genetic, but you actually have to use an item in order to pass that mutation, which is to me kind of annoying. It's not really all that genetic if you have to use, I mean, it is genetic, but it's not as fun to bother breeding for it if you have to use an item for it. Uh, recessive means that it is genetic. Okay, sorry, I just read that already, which means the parents must have had the mutation themselves or carry it silently in their genes. I'm really looking forward to this. Some mutations are merely cosmetic and won't affect the wolf much. These usually fall into the secondary mutation category like albinism or melanism. Primary mutations, however, can range from simple to drastic and life altering with some even proving lethal, which are probably going to be really sad to look at. Luckily, most mutations are rare. That's not necessarily lucky. 
if they're like cute mutations, <laughs> especially the random ones. If a recessive mutation pops up, be wary though. It runs in the genes. Variants you'll learn about another time. Oh, there's more. So for now, let's look at the markings. You'll see that every wolf has 10 slots available for markings. That's over on the side. You'll see uh, la, la, la. And each filled marking slot has a percentage in brackets beside it. This is the opacity, which just determines how opaque the marking is on the wolf's body. Marking slots layer on a wolf in order with slot one appearing at the bottom, slot 10 layering on top last. In breeding, markings have their own genetics and fall into different tiers. They have a shape category and a color category on top. Sometimes a marking bred onto a puppy might mutate within its shape set to another marking. Really? As parents are crossed together, their markings cross too. Colors could jump between markings or even produce new combinations. Huh. Okay. Uh, one last thing before we continue. Under the breeding information area, you'll see an area called fertility. The fertility of a wolf only applies to female wolves, but this can be adjusted with help from the fertility snake in the crossroads. The lower a female's fertility, the harder she might be to become pregnant. Although I did hear they sometimes produce more random mutations. That's enough on genetics and such for now. I'm sure you'll figure out more as you go along. Let's go back to your den and click the breeding image again. Click the breeding image again. Okay. Great. So this is where you come to breed. On the left, you'll see the breeding male with his energy and on the right, a drop down of female wolves. Now females need to be adults to breed and in heat. Wolves come into heat nine real life days after their last heat ended and stay in heat for four days. Good. These cooldowns are much shorter than on light and I'm happy with that. They can only be bred when they're in heat, so be sure to keep track of their cycles. When a wolf is in heat, a flame icon will appear on the den page beside her and on the page itself. When she's bred, she becomes pregnant and will stay pregnant for four days. Oh, but the pregnancy, the, the number of days she's pregnant is longer by a day. After birth, she will be... Oh. No, the cooldown is pretty much the same. <laughs> what? No. After birth, I must not have read. I must not remember what I actually read the last time. After birth, she will be on a breeding cooldown for 20 real life days. This is so she has a nice rest in between litters and doesn't get overbred. Now let's go ahead and pick a female to breed with. For the purposes of this quest, it won't matter if she is in heat or not, but she will need to be an adult and not on a breeding cooldown. If you don't have a suitable female now, I'd recommend to get one. Okay, and I should be able to use my main, my alpha female, so pack leader, yeah, okay. Each breeding attempt will take 2% energy from each wolf, and females eligible need to be in heat, have at least 2% energy, 50% hunger, 80% mood, and 1 HP. Okay, so breed wolves, let's see how terrible this combination turns out. Oh my gosh, congratulations, why do you get sent to the crossroads that's weird the female is now pregnant and soon your pack will have the pitter patter pitter patter of little paws next to our pup sitter in the pup den ah but we're not finished yet are we there are a few more things you need to know before the new arrivals let's go back to your den page here's what we need to do pregnant females require a nest by the end of their pregnancy to ensure they give birth safely let's click the nesting image in your den right now Here's where you come to nest a pregnant wolf. Nesting can be done at any stage of the wolf's pregnancy, but don't forget. You see, if you don't give an expectant wolf a nest, she could run into difficulties during birth, even stillborn puppies. However, once a wolf is nested, she'll be unable to fulfill any roles such as scouting, hunting, herbalism, etc. The only exception to this is the lead wolf, who will still have to carry on. One final thing, nesting requires nesting material to construct, which you can craft out of feathers and other materials. If you don't have any... Don't worry if you don't have any, as I'll ensure she gets what she needs. So go ahead and nest the wolf. Oh, I probably should have clicked on that. Click nest. My bad. Click the little checkbox here. Okay, perfect. The wolf is now nested and ready to give birth. And wait, what's this? I think she's giving birth right now because it's the tutorial. Your pack just got a little bit bigger. If your puppies haven't arrived yet, you'll be sure to see them within the next 10 minutes. Well done. I think we're done with this quest now. You will have puppies to attend to. Yay! They're not going to look that great just because, I mean, both of my wolves only have three markings each. So I've got my first litter of cubs born. All right, before we check out my puppies, I'm actually going to go check out the quest really quickly. Okay, let's go check out my puppies because I don't think there are any new quests. Those are the same ones. Uh, where's my puppies? Puppies are here. Lead wolf puppies. Okay, we got a male and a female. Aw, he's cute. Oh, look, he's so adorable. Look at those huge 
feet. Oh my gosh, those are ginormous. Okay, so we've got one little puppy. He's got Black Shepherd, White Dilution, and Gray Agouti. And he's got a blue base. He's cool, medium, tier one. Okie dokie. And my next puppy is... Aw, that one's cute too. White Inverted Agouti and White Dilution. This one only got two, two markings. The base is Marengo, which I think is my is the base I chose for my male. So it looks like that's it for the breeding quest. There are some more quests left to go in the tutorial, but I think we're going to check those out in some upcoming videos. So thank you all so much for joining me on Wolden today, and I hope to talk to you soon. Bye.